Around the year 1790, when King Shaga of the Zulu was born, in the Eastern Cape, there was a young Gunukwa man by the name of David Stirman, who had already been fighting the colonizers. I'm just putting things into perspective. Before the mighty Zulu Empire was even a thing, David Stirman and his brother, Klaas Stirman, had been battling colonialists. David was part of a notoriously rebellious Khoi family in the Eastern Cape, which was led by his brother, Klaas Stirman. In the 1780s and 1790s, more and more land in these Eastern Cape districts, around Hrafrenet, going into Cradock, in all those areas, Dutch Boers were taking up more and more land. Many of them were poor, they were running away from Cape Town. But when they were taking land, they were taking land which was already occupied and owned by Africans. And in those areas, it was the Kunukwa Khoi and their Kosa and San relations. You see, in the fight against the Dutch colonizers, Klaus Stirman, the eldest brother of David Stirman, had begun to build an army, a warrior force, right in these Eastern Cape districts, which could take on the Dutch Boers in small attacks and skirmishes. They also allowed runaway slaves to come and join them. They also encouraged Khoi who were being forced into labor by the Boers to desert the farmers and come and join the Khoi rebel force. Klaus Stirman had led his forces into battles against Dutch Boers. His brother was equally militant. David not only fought in the wars against the Boers, but he also took matters of vengeance into his personal hands when he poisoned his so-called master, a Boer farmer who had allegedly whipped him, flogged him, salted his wounds, and left David to burn in the sun. For Stirman, his freedom was not a thing to be taken lightly. For David, losing land, losing freedom, losing people, losing culture was a matter that would make him a relentless menace to the colonial forces. After his brother Klaas died in the early 1800s, David took over the clan leadership and he continued to encourage alliances between Kosa and Goy to resist the advance of the colonial Boers. He was such a menace that the British who had taken over the Cape colony at the time called him a troublesome and dangerous man. Because he was considered a troublesome and dangerous man, David Stirman was sent to Robben Island in 1809, along with other boy rebels of these Eastern Cape districts. They escaped to Robben Island just that December and made their way back into the land. And when he came back, David Stirman joined up forces with his relations amongst Amakosa Namagunkweb. David was so important to the early Kosa resistance against the uh, British that he was one of the reasons why British forces could be delayed and fought back in that war of 1812 when the British came to expel Amakosa over the Fish River. Between 1812 and 1819, when the British were really fighting the first wars against Amakosa, David was something of a hidden rebel, going between the various communities of his African relations to help them put up a strong resistance against the colonizers. In 1819, the British had faced off with Amakosa, led by Makanda Gangele in the Battle of Grahamstown. Ngaele was arrested after this war and sent to Robben Island. Just a short time later, the British decided 
that they needed to also again capture Stirman and put him behind bars for good. And so for the second time in his life, David Stirman in December of 1819 found himself in Robben Island. But a year later, Stirman would again escape Robben Island with Makanda. Unfortunately, as we know, Nele himself drowned, but Stirman made it to the shore, successfully having escaped Robben Island twice as an anti-colonial leader. This so vexed the British that they captured him again for a third time, put him behind bars again in Robben Island, and in 1823 decided to pack him up, put him on a ship destined for Australia, and sent him to die in Australia. David Stirman was buried in Australia. Unfortunately, his grave was not to be found, but his spirit was repatriated back home in 2017 by virtue of ritual. This is the story, the legend of the troublesome and dangerous Hunukwa Khoi leader, David Stirman. <laughs>